The Institute of Internal Auditors presents the All Things Internal Audit AI podcast. In this episode, IIA Director of Standards and Professional Guidance, George Barham, discusses the IIA's new artificial intelligence auditing framework, its structure, and practical implications for its use by internal auditors with IIA's Senior Manager of Content Development, Robert Perez. George, thanks so much uh, for joining me today. Uh, you and I recently hosted a webinar exploring the IIA's new artificial intelligence auditing framework. Uh, and so I thought I'd have you here on the podcast so that you could share a little bit about that today. Tell me a little bit about why it needed to be revised. Yeah. Hey, Robert, thanks for having me today. Yeah, certainly one of the biggest drivers in updating this framework um, are some of the most uh, biggest changes that have happened related to chat GBT, generative AI. I mean, that that's really one of the uh, latest developments that um, has caused a lot of, uh, uh, you know, questions and from a risk standpoint that uh, auditors, you know, should be aware of and organizations are, are wrestling with. So, um, you know, we've seen uh, during the past, you know, year or so that 73% uh, of companies in the U.S., according to a, a survey PwC conducted, um, are using AI. They've adopted into their business. Certainly generative AI is, is one of the, the leading things. So we just felt like at this time, it, it made a lot of sense to update the framework, modernize it uh, to some degree, and make sure that it was still uh, applicable to, to our members. So many see AI as, as having a potential to enact revolutionary change in, in the way we do business. How does uh, the updated framework help organizations and, and specifically internal auditors mitigate against some of the risks that will inevitably come because of AI? So from a risk standpoint, um, there are lots of things to consider with AI, certainly. Um, but one of the first things that we like to recommend and say should be in place is having a good strategic plan, having uh, good governance in place as well. So making sure that that uh, governing body who's going to own the oversight of AI, um, that that's very clear. Um, that happens, um, you know, on a regular basis. Um, but uh, in terms of the risk that they need to be concerned about, I mean, it's it's really all over the place. It could be financial. It could be uh, bias. We hear a lot about that. Making sure that um, you know one cross section of the population is is not affected more than others, or there's some you know ulterior motive to uh, discriminate against um, a certain group. So th those are certainly um, um, things to consider from a risk standpoint. But also, you know, when you, when you get into generative AI, then you also have um, you know, copyright laws, infringement type of um, risks. So organizations that are responsible for producing content, I mean, that's certainly something they're going to have to be aware of to make sure that what they're producing is not violating any kinds of laws or anything of that nature. So clearly there, there are plenty of reasons uh, to implement this framework. Can you provide a sort of a brief overview of the framework itself? Yeah, so the original version of the framework was produced in 2017, 2018, and uh, it was a three-part series. So um, our updated framework uh, has been consolidated to, to one file, one document. It's 31 pages. And uh, again, um, to reiterate, it, it's the, the biggest goal was to modernize it, um, use examples that are more relevant to today's world, of course. Um, you know, and it's broken into four different parts, and it's written from the standpoint of uh, an auditor beginning their their journey on the the AI uh, path. So it it starts with a lot of uh, foundational uh, knowledge that they would need to know, some of the history, some of the um, examples of uses, and it kind of builds off that. So then it goes into you know how they can go out into their organization, start to have those discussions. Then it goes into a little bit more detailed uh, you know questions and. Uh, almost like a checklist is, is part four, it's a practitioner's guide. So the approach um, and the perspective is written from uh, an internal auditor's viewpoint of, of tackling a subject that they um, don't have a lot of knowledge on, but uh, it, it kind of holds their hand and it gets them to the point that they feel comfortable going out and, and having those discussions and beginning to, to audit it. Um, so that's, that, was the, uh, that was the approach that we took. So, so as you mentioned, it is in four parts, and I'd, I'd like to break those down in specifics for, for each one. So it begins with an overview. Uh, is that correct? Yes, yes. Overview, introduction. Um, we spend a little bit of time talking about the history of AI. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly not all-encompassing, but it's a look through the decades of uh, different developments, and even before it was called artificial intelligence, you know, some of the theories and some of the, the applications. Um, it goes into machine learning. Mm -hmm. It's certainly something that's been around a little bit longer. 
longer. So we spend a little bit of time in the framework and that first uh, section with the introduction and overview, making sure that there's a definition, uh, making sure that there are examples. And so we kind of, you know, guide a, uh, the reader through, uh, you know, how AI has developed through the years. So in part two, the framework is all about how to build an understanding of where you're at in your organization, correct? Right. And uh, part two, it, uh, like we, you know, we talked about a second ago, it starts to build on the foundational knowledge that uh, you would have acquired in, in part one. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's really the next step. So it's okay, now that I know what AI is, I understand it, I understand examples. Now I want to start having those discussions in my organization. And uh, also leading up to that, um, as an auditor, what can I go ahead and be proactive in gathering? So policies, procedures, um, you know, board minutes, things like that, that are maybe already existing that you have access to from your other audits um, to start pulling that information, start having those discussions with uh, some of the folks in your organization you work with, such as the CFO, or if you're an IT auditor, maybe the director of IT. But it, it's it's very uh, basic in its approach. But um, again, it's it's how you would, it's getting you more comfortable in uh, what topics should I ask about and how should I go about it. So yeah, part two is all about uh, the engagement piece and leveraging the relationships that you already have. And, and and part three gets us to sort of the meat of the framework itself. That's right. That's right. Part three is actually called the framework. Um, so we break it down into three parts, uh, three domains. Uh, it's governance, management, and internal audit. Um, the governance piece, you know, we like to start there. I think if you were looking at really any topic um, that an internal auditor would focus on, you'd want to understand the the oversight piece. You know, who's at the end of the day, who's responsible for making sure that the organization is uh, is, is doing what they say they're going to do and then making sure it ties to those uh, strategic initiatives um, that the organization is trying to accomplish. So we start with uh, we start with governance, then we go into the management piece, which would be more of the day to day. Um, how are we monitoring? How are we managing it? What uh, key performance indicators have we identified to make sure the AI is, is doing what we'd want? And then also the, the risk management and control environment. So um, those are things that are, um, if you look at our three lines model, that are the first and, and second lines. Um, and then the internal audit domain um, would be that last piece uh, of the puzzle. And that's going to be focused on the advisory piece and the assurance piece. And uh, we think that there's really an opportunity for auditors to be an advisor with AI, maybe more so than uh, jumping into audits. But uh, certainly some of the organizations who are further along um, that continuum of AI development, certainly there'd be some opportunities to provide assurance services too. But we're, really, we're trying to encourage our members uh, and those in the profession to try to partner with management and, and be a resource. And typically that's in an advisory capacity. Yeah. And I, I'm glad you mentioned the, the three lines model because it is part of the framework itself to, to sort of bring that familiarity for folks who are familiar with the three lines model. Yeah, absolutely. We feel like the three lines model is a, a tried and true and pretty widely adopted um, model that um, that people in the profession um, look at every day, not just for artificial intelligence, but uh, really provides a, a, the, the basis and understanding of how a control environment is organized, right? So you have those first and second lines that we talked about, you know, management, risk management, compliance. You have internal audit as your third line, right? Your independent and objective uh, party. And then you have uh, internal a lot of working with both management and providing uh, input to the to the board or the audit committee or whatever the governing body is. So they're really relying on us as internal auditors to help them, um, you know, govern and, and have the information they need to provide that oversight. Excellent. So part four is uh, of the framework provides some great tools uh, to help practitioners actually get started. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so part four was really uh, the intention there is to uh, to give our members, to give practitioners uh, something that they can just, you know, print off and get started or have it on their tablets and uh, and start to have those discussions. And uh, we wanted to give them, you know, not just, uh, you know, the knowledge and the information within the framework. We wanted to give them a tool. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's certainly something that I think you can you could customize it and it's not going to be a one size fits all. But I think if you if you use that in initial checklist that's in that uh, practitioner's guide in, in part four, I think that's going to get you off and running. And that was our goal. And then we also feel like that, um, you know, the, the, the practitioner guide, the framework itself, we reserve the right to update that and uh, and make it more valuable, um, especially as the technology changes. So 
Um, I think there could be additional checklists or maybe additional considerations that we we update through the you know through the months and, and coming years on that. So really just a jumping off point for an auditor. So obviously lots that we can get from from the framework. We, we've talked a little bit uh, in the webinar as well about the uh, the uh, IIA's uh, internal audit uh, knowledge center, which has additional information. But I did want to give you an opportunity to, to share any closing thoughts, anything you think we might not have covered that is important. I think, you know, the, the thing I would say is uh, artificial intelligence is not like any other topic or hot topic that you hear about news feeds and articles online. Uh, it, it seems to be maybe, you know, one of two ends of the spectrum that it's, you know, it's scary, it's intimidating, it's going to take over the world. And then you also have the, hey, there's nothing to it. It's much ado about nothing. And, you know, probably the answer is somewhere in the middle. And so I would encourage internal auditors to uh, try to be as comfortable as they can with an uncomfortable topic and, and realize they're not going to have all the knowledge, all the skill sets needed this first go around. But through the years, uh, be willing to develop that skill set, learn more, engage your organization, um, you know, engage your risk management functions. If you have a, a, an ERM function, a compliance function, have those discussions. Um, and just, uh, you know, get, get your hands dirty, get out there and start to, to look at it. Uh, and just, you know, keep in mind that, um, and we, we highlight this in the framework, that a lot of the things you're already doing around data, around cybersecurity, those things are going to be very relevant to artificial intelligence as well. So you're already doing things that they're going to help you with, with AI. Well, George, thank you so much for taking time. Yes, sir. Well, uh, hopefully we'll have you back on the podcast sometime soon. Thanks for having me, Robert. Absolutely.